Hello, in this video tutorial, we will be doing some derivation practice. That means deriving an expression for indicated variables. Practice for the AP Physics 1 and AP Physics C e exam. In this particular video, we will focus on problem number six. Please remember to pause or rewind the video as needed. Always remember to list any and all potential concepts that would help you move forward with the question. Let's begin. Read along with me, please. A sphere of mass M is attached to a light rod of length L, which is attached to a central pivot point so that it can freely swing in a vertical circle. The rod is held so that it is nearly vertical with the sphere on top and released. The sphere is detached from the rod at its lowest point and then falls a vertical distance L. Derive an expression for the horizontal displacement of the sphere in terms of LM and fundamental constant. Well, what I see in this is if the rod, if the, the sphere and the rod are losing potential energy, gaining kinetic energy, I'm seeing conservation of energy from top to bottom. But as the sphere is detached from the rod here at the lowest point, its instantaneous velocity is directed to the right at that moment. It is going to travel as a horizontally launch projectile. And so horizontal projectile motion would be the second concept. The velocity at the end of the conservation energy problem becomes the launch velocity of the projectile. So we're going to, again, use velocity as the linking concept between the two. So let's go ahead and begin with the conservation of energy part. Conservation of energy tells us that energy initial equals energy final, which would mean energy at the top this point would equal energy at the bottom. Well, the energy at the top is going to be potential energy, so that's going to be mgh. And that's going to be equal to the energy at the bottom, which would be kinetic energy, one half mv squared. Now, h. We have to make a substitution there. H is the entire height, but that is L plus L. Two, two radii, the diameter would be L plus L or 2L. So MG2L equals 1 half MV squared. Solve the equation for V. We will multiply by 2 uh, and divide the mass and then square root. So V is equal to the square root of 4 GL, okay? Or, um, well, I'll, I'll use that out here. Okay, so now for the projectile motion part, we do need two possible equations here. We need one for the Y direction, Uh, which would be height is equal to one half gt squared. Okay, we're going to need that. And then for the x direction, which is ultimately what we are looking for, which is the horizontal displacement delta x. And the only equation that goes with that, it would be delta x equals initial velocity times time. Now, you have to solve the first equation for time and plug it in there. Your velocity at the bottom of the swing, however, v not x, that's going to be the same as um, the square root of 4gl. So we do have a few things to substitute. Let's go ahead and get to it. First solve for time. Multiply by 2, divide by g, square root. T equals the square root of 2H divided by G when you rearrange it those three steps. Delta X would be, uh, V naught X would be the speed at the bottom is the same as the launch speed, square root of 4GL times the square root of 2H over G. Put those two underneath one radical and we get 4 GL times 2H divided by G. Cancels, cancels. Now the height 
the height would be equal to what? Well, that's equal to L, isn't it? So we need to change that up too. So cleaning this up just a little bit, delta X would be equal to, um, I can take out, I can take the square root of four and the square root of L squared, and I get two L, and the only thing left over is the square root of two there. Two L square root of two, that would be how far it goes. Now, if the length were increased, would the horizontal displacement uh, increase, decrease, or stay the same? So delta x is directly proportional to L. So if L increases, then your displacement delta x also increases. Okay, now if the mass is tripled to 3m, what's gonna happen? Well, your horizontal displacement is independent of mass. Therefore, it's independent of any change of mass. And we could say delta x would stay the same. 